Okay, g'day everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, if you feel like supporting my videos or me in general, <laughs> head over to the Windows Store and buy some of my games uh, or the Patreon page and uh, become a supporter of What's a Creel. Good on yous. Okay, so that's enough theory in our DirectX videos. We've done nothing but theory for many, many videos it looks like. But uh, today we're going to do some programming. This is going to be unreal. Uh, what we're looking at today is a real-time loop, the uh, the real-time game loop, I, s I suppose. But uh, we're not going to get into uh, the structure of a game very much until maybe next video or, or the following video after that. Um, so today we'll just be making a simple bouncy ball. This is going to be very, very cool. Okay, real-time graphics. Um, there is actually no such thing as real-time graphics in a modern computer. If you think about it, the um, computer's CPU and the graphics card, they work on clock ticks, so there is no real-time. But what we do is we update the re the image on the screen fast enough so that to our eyes or to the you know person playing the game it looks like real time. Um, yeah, but there's no real um, actual smooth movement in the computer. It's lots of different frames. Okay, so the key to pretending uh, we've got real time is this peak message function. So we have been using get message uh, a, a few shoots ago. We actually wrote this. I think it was two or three shoots ago. Um, we wrote a program that used get message. Now, the trouble with get message is, right, it it looks at the message queue, and if there is no message, so if the user hasn't touched a key or the mouse hasn't moved or the you know window hasn't been resized, the get message function actually just sits down and waits for a message to come along. So that's pretty useless to us. That doesn't give us real time. That you know just stops the whole program from responding until the user does something. So what we want is another method, this peak message method. Um, it's the same as get message, or, or basically the same as get message. We'll, we'll code it in just a second, except if there is no message at all, um, it returns control to us. Yeah, so we can say something like, if peak message, um, then you know deal with that message windows. Thank you very much. Otherwise, give us control back because we've got a game to update and render. That's what we're doing. Okay, that's what we're doing. Um, alrighty, so here's just a little bit of a code. Um, we will program this at the end, so I mean, it doesn't really matter. This um, comment just here is not green. I don't know why. I probably added that later, but yeah, it's not relevant either. Okay, but making a bouncy ball. So the crux of today's uh, video, I just want to make a little demonstration of real-time graphics. Now, we're about to introduce a lot of structure to our app. Um, the hardest thing about making a whole game um, is, is just making a game. It's, it's, it's the structure. It's putting it all together. It's, it's realizing when your project is finished. Um, so we're miles away from that yet, but pretty soon we're going to start to talk about the structure of a game. I hope, hopefully next video, but we're not doing it today. But today we will introduce two of the main concepts to the structure of a game, and this is called the update and render loop. Um, the game in the background, when it's not responding to the user pressing the left key or the mouse or whatever, the game in the background just repeats these two operations, update, render, update, render, update, render, update, render. And it's a little bit strange, but it's almost like the computer is playing the game twice. So it's number crunching. It's figuring out where all of the objects are, um, including moving the player around the screen or, or, you know, moving all of the baddies around the screen, all of the stuff that's involved in a game. The computer's got to do a lot of number crunching to figure out where the objects are. And the second thing that it does is render which is really just for the player. So what the player sees, um, you know, what the computer renders is just a representation of the numbers that the update method crunches. I hope that makes a bit of sense. So, so basically all we do is we just update a bunch of numbers, uh, crunching them with, um, you know, little physics engines and all sorts of things like that in the update method, then we render something to the screen so the player can see what's going on. Okay, so just a little bit about game physics. You're about to see me um, well, make a bouncing ball, but what you might notice if you've studied physics at all is that what I'm doing here is not even remotely correct. It's absolutely not the way physics works, but it's interesting that in in game programming, often when we want to uh, simulate physics, we, we just pretend. And the simple fact is there's no way that a computer is uh, anything like powerful enough to, to even render the physics of, say, an apple falling to the ground. It's just, it's too complicated. But who cares? <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. So what we're going to do is uh, make a bouncing ball. 
in um, C++. So the project as we left it last time uh, should look something a little like this. Um, it's it's a bit of a mess and like I say we're about to split this stuff into a lot of different classes. I think we mightn't even keep our graphics class the way that we did it uh, previously. I don't I don't like this um, draw circle method or anything anymore but we'll see how we go next video. So the main thing for today that we want to do is uh, this peak message and uh, render a bouncing ball. So if we just scroll up, um, right here in WM Paint, we don't want to uh, repaint the screen there anymore. We want to make a random method, or, or we want to render in um, you know if there's no message to be uh, to be sent to our window proc. So what I might do is just um, comment out all of that. Uh, or you could just delete it. So all we're saying here is that we don't want to paint or, or draw our graphics um, when the WM paint method is called. No, we want to do them down here in a loop. So this um, one, two, three, four, five, these five lines just here were our get message loop. So that's not needed anymore. I'll just comment that out. We're going to need a render, uh, not a render, sorry, a, um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Peak message loop. Oh. Okay, mind blank. Message. Um, alrighty, we're going to need a message structure to store our message in. And I like to just set that um, to anything really. It doesn't matter so long as it's not WM quit. Um, well, message.message .message does not equal WM quit. Okay, so we still want to allow the user to quit our application. It's not like they ever would, but I don't know. Say hypothetically, if somebody wanted to quit the bouncing ball application, um, yeah, we do want to allow that. So that's what the um, infinite loop just here does. Uh, well, it's not infinite, obviously. If uh, message is quit, then uh, we'll shut down. Okay, but anyway, here, yeah, peak. If peak message, that's uh, the one. And the first operand is a message. Um, the second we can pass our window handle if we want, window handle. Uh, the other option there is just put null there. And if you put null there, then it means any window uh, belonging to the current thread. So if you put window handle there, it'll mean any messages that are passed to this window. And if you put null there, it means any messages that are passed to any of the windows that this thread owns. Yeah, I hope that makes a bit of sense. We might, oh well, yeah, we'll put, we'll put null there. Yeah, we'll put null there. Uh, we don't want to filter anything, but you can filter things out. So you could just read the last keyboard or mouse message if you want. And this last operation is what you want um, to happen to the message after it's processed. So we might get it removed, shall we? Okay, so peak message is going to return what exactly? I think a bool. A bool, either true or false. There was a message or there wasn't. And uh, if there was a message, then what we want to do is... Um, Dispatch the message. Um, yeah, just like that. Dispatch the message. So if there was a message, then just as as normal, we want to send um, that message to window proc up here. Yeah. So that'll be those paint met methods as well. But yeah, the the paint mes messages. Sorry, but we won't be actually updating the screen in um, our WM paint message anymore. Okay, but here's the exciting thing. This is the exciting thing. So else. Okay, so if there wasn't a message, then we can do whatever we want. We can update and then we can render. Um, in our update, we might make a, um, a couple of little variables up here. So we want a bouncing ball or something that looks like a bouncing ball, even though it's actually going to be nothing like it. Y equals 0, 0.0. And we'll get float y speed equals... I guess one or zero, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so we're going to have a ball at some position. I'll try and start it in the middle of the screen and have it fall down to the bottom of the screen, then bounce, bounce, bounce. Um, all we want to do is, uh, first of all, add to the Y speed. So the Y speed starts at zero, or in other words, the ball starts out not falling at all. But gravity, as you probably noticed, actually has a strange ability to um, accelerate an object towards the ground. So let's simulate that. We would say Y speed plus equals 1.0 F. Um, that could be anything, so 3, a value of 3 just there would mean that there's super strong gravity and it'll pull the ball down really quickly to the ground. Um, and the other thing that we've got to do is once we've changed the speed 
the velocity of our ball. Once we've accelerated it from gravity, we've got to change the ball's y position. So plus equals y speed. Um, once the ball hits the ground, um, which is when y is greater than uh, 600. Yeah, so the, the bottom of the window is 600, I think. Yeah, 600 pixels down. So if the ball hits the ground, if y is greater than 600, then the ball doesn't keep doesn't keep going. It actually uh, bounces off the ground. And this is another point where things get a little bit strange. So we'll just say that the ball is on the ground. So if it accidentally falls straight through the ground, we'll just quickly pretend that didn't happen. And we'll put it on the ground. And we'll also reverse its direction so it bounces. Uh, equals negative 30. That, my friends, is game physics. <laughs> That's just not even close. That's not even close, but I tell you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good in just a second. You watch this. Okay, so our render method, we want to begin draw first of all, and down the bottom we're going to have to have an end draw. And in the middle here we want to probably clear the screen to something, so graphics. Um, clear the screen, we need red, green, blue, so I might say zero red, zero green, and maybe dark blue. And after that we want to draw our ball, so I think there's a um, graphic, I might just copy the the call to draw circle from up here, yeah. Well actually no I won't because it's got a bunch of randoms in it. Um, graphics, draw circle, okay, so the X position of the circle, so I think if I make my circle 50 pixels in radius, um, maybe something like 375, we'll put it in the middle of the screen, something like that. My, my mental arithmetic is terrible, but the Y position, well that's here, Y. Um, we will eventually make object classes with all of these variables, yeah, so this is, you know, it's not, it's not finished, it's just a, just a demonstration of some really strange looking physics, but... Uh, 50 would be the radius. I might put point 0 there just because I'm a good lad. Um, red, green, blue. Let's make it white, shall we? 1.0F, 1.0F, 1.0F. Yeah, I'm not happy with the way this graphics class works anymore, but um, we'll change it later, I think. Let's have a look and see if we've got a bouncing ball. This is going to be really cool. Well, would you look at that. Is that unbelievable or what? Okay, so what's interesting about that is if if you look at that ball, you'd say, yeah, that's that's a bouncing ball. That's um, it's definitely a bouncing ball. But if you look at what we just did, that's that's nothing like real physics. Um, we'll get into a lot more of this stuff later. I hope that was useful as an introduction to real time. And uh, I look forward to making some more vids. This stuff is about to get really, really interesting. All right. Cheers. See ya.